everybody. I'm here with Balin Govender. He is the president of Community Development Foundation. We are so excited to be here with him today. He has the most phenomenal testimony. It is absolutely going to touch your life. Welcome, uh, Balin. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And to have this time with you. I'm really, really excited. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your Community Development Foundation? Community Development Foundation has been established in 2000. It, has, it takes care for the complete human being, housing, caring, shelter, food. We get you any situation where there's a need and we go and help. Wow. Just in the COVID period, the foundation has fed over 500,000 rand worth of food, wow. clothing and blankets. Sure. We do not get money from any special organization. I walk by faith <laughs> and I believe God for everything. Many will tell you, I walk into a situation because God does the miracle. Yes. It's got nothing to do with me. All I do is to say, Lord, provide. And he does. Community Development Foundation, you'll find us daily on the road taking care of people. Wow. We love people. Wow. That is like, that's really close to my heart. I love hearing that people can be taken care of because there's so much poverty in South Africa and all around the world. I Absolutely. Mean, sure. So what I want to find out from you, you told me about how you got saved. And that was so, so powerful because you come from a Hindu background. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us how the Lord met you and how you got saved and saved your entire family. There's such a presence of God. Whoever is watching this right now, there's a presence that's mm -hmm. transcending from this place. There's just phenomenal. To God be the glory. Yes. That's God's presence here. Mm -hmm. To share my testimony, I got saved at the age of 17, at a tender age of 17. Mm -hmm. I come from a Hindu background. My dad was like a Hindu priest. My eldest brother, we moved with him, with my dad, into an outbuilding in Sydney, Durban. That's where I was born. As we moved into the building that same night, my brother was attacked with a demonic power. Sure. From that day till the age of 21, till the age of, say, 18, 19, our family and E was traumatized. We used to hear things running on the roof. Wow. We used to hear knock at the door. Literally, uh, and we want to run, and Dad said, don't go. And we were shocked because we were little boys. I was about seven years old. Mm -hmm. She heard this noise, and I was tormented with this fear. My brother shouldn't sleep at night. My dad and mom used to take turns at night to sleep because he used to bite his tongue, and blood used to come out. Wow. He was tormented by this demonic power. Mm -hmm. So my dad was a watch repairer. He worked, he went to work during the day, he came home, worked at night to a certain time, and he used to save the money to go to the best doctors, mm. the best witchcraft, the, be best, the best sangomas, nothing out. That reminds me of the story in the Bible about the young man who was tormented by demons. That's right. And his father came to Jesus asking for help. That's right. right. Oh. I like what you said. Yes. My dad just paid the money. But my mom was the one trying to get help for my, father, for, wow. for my brother. She ran everywhere. Eventually, two doors down from my house was a lady called a prayer auntie, they called her. Mm -hmm. A prayer Oma, one that loved God. But what happened here, it was a Hindu lady next door to us said, why don't you go and try that lady? Wow. <laughs> Maybe something will happen. Yes. So my mom said, okay. So we went, my dad refused to go. He said, if he's born in Hindu, he will die in Hindu. That's a famous saying in, our, in the Hindu yes, religion. Yes. We will not change. So he went down and we went for prayer, week after week. And as we begin to go, we begin to see changes happen, my brother. Mm. Those demonic powers started to stop working. But in the meantime, we took him to the doctors. And the doctor said, he will die at 21. Sure. They have to have a brain operation and cut his brain off and he will die. But eventually, God touched my brother 
and he got healed. We as a family came to Jesus Christ. Myself at the age of 17, I was determined to become a gangster. I was determined to leave because I failed school at stage seven. Sure. And I had nothing to live for. I wanted to run away out of the country. I wanted to do some dangerous things. But in time, in a tent crusade, I heard a man talk about Jesus, how he went into hell. He spoke about Jesus and I received him as my savior. At one point in time, there was a young man that came to bump me. And I said in my heart, I want to kill him. Wow. The only way I can do it is to put a knife through my coat. And I had the knife ready. And as I was about to bump him, I hear a voice says, stop, stop. And I said, who's this? I said, I have to get rid of this man. And he said, stop. And little did I realize later, it was the voice of God. Wow. And I stopped. The same night I went to a crusade, I received Jesus as my savior. Wow. My life was a change from there onwards. God changed my life. That is so, so powerful. That's the grace of God that even before you gave your life to Jesus, the Lord spoke to you That's right. to rescue you. Because you, you could be sitting in jail right now for manslaughter that you did years ago. That's right. And you, you're not. You are a free man today. I am. And yes. what a joy. And the questions I asked myself when I entered manhood, Lord, oh. Why have you made me a person that's not scared of anything? Wow. I walk to any gang zone in South Africa and around the world. I'm fearless mm. because I remember the word of God. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I never realized at the time when I wanted to move the knife and God spoke to me. I was fearless to kill somebody. Wow. But Jesus made a difference in my life. So he took the fearlessness that you were born with and transferred it into his kingdom so that you could speak about the gospel without fear. Without fear. I love that. I love, because I know that when we have a real encounter with God, we're unashamed yes. over what the Lord has done for us. Absolutely. Yes. I took what Paul said. I'm not ashamed. Of the of gospel, the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ, <laughs> for it's a power. And man, I'll tell you, man, I'm never as scared to talk about Jesus. Amen. Neither am I. So we're sitting in good company with each Amen. other. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That is so amazing. So I want to find out from you. I know I've heard your testimony about a bombing that happened yeah. to you. It was in 1988. That's right. And um, where were you at the time, just before the bombing had happened? I was in the main court in Krugersdorp in Commissioner Street. Mm -hmm. But why was there a bomb in your car? The car, the bomb wasn't in my car. Mm -hmm. The bomb was planted just to kill me. Oh, wow. Because I was told the previous Sunday, you are going to die literally spoken by a human being, you are going to die. And because of the broadcasting, what's happening, I cannot disclose the name. Mm. But you must know, the Bible says they've, the ones closest to you, like what happened to Job, his wife said, why don't you kiss God and die? And, and, and I was told, you're going to die. Sure. And that week, I had every demon in hell came to me. It was on a Wednesday night in the morning. I had a, I had a visit of the demon come to me and say, take your car out, drive up to West Rand Corn Mines in Renfontein, and just roll it down. Your problem will be over. Sure. You will go to heaven. But I said, I don't know you. Mm. He said, no, don't worry. Everything will be okay. You'll be out of your trouble. I went to trauma before the bomb blast that I never had in my life. There's a man that worked for me. He was given 10,000 rand and a gun. And he said, shoot him. And he has 10,000. Sure. He took the gun. He had the money in his hand. 
He said, sir, I was behind you to pull the trigger, but it couldn't go off. Wow. Came back and he cried and said, please forgive me. And that reminds me of the scripture in Psalm 91. It says, he who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. So, you know, thousands can come from your right or from your left, but you will not be overcome. That's right. But it's only when you stay in the presence of God where you receive protection. Absolutely. It's when you, you can be a Christian. It doesn't mean you are protected. If you are not abiding under the shadow of the, the Almighty. Almighty. Yeah. There's no protection. No, no. So God is so, He is so faithful. I'm really, really in awe of your testimony. I want to ask you, um, the people that were saying they were going to kill you and that planted the bomb and all that kind of thing. Why were they doing that? I know you told me, but I'd like you to tell our viewers. Yeah, the bomb, actually, if you look in the newspapers, on the 18th of March, 1988, it was the bomb planted by McBride. By the hmm. At that time, I went to court and I was defending a case. And as I walked out, to my car, to go to my car. Mm. I was told, go right. The Spirit of God spoke into my heart, go right. And as I walked right towards the police station, 300 meters down the, down the pavement, I hear the bomb blow exploded. Wow. As I turned, I began to see hands and fingers, fingers and legs going up in the air and I put my hand and I said, my God, my God, wow. you have saved me, but I feel the pain mm. of these people dying. I've never seen it before. Mm. What is going on? Mm. Ever been at my car, I would have been dead because next to my car was the car that blew up into pieces and the man died. Wow. But if I sat in my car, I would have been gone. Sure. My life would have been gone. McBride planted this bomb because he wanted the attention of the South African government. Wow. I never harbored hatred and bitterness in my heart about what happened. I said, Lord, forgive what happens, yes. happened. But listen to this. As I got off, I went to the station commander. I said, station commander, I took authority. I'm instructing you. I'm asking you to come with me to my car. He said, who are you? My name is Bowling Governor. My car got bombed. Would you get off your seat and come with me? Wow. He said, yes, sir. He called me, sir. He said, I'll go with you. I said, come with me. He said, why? He said, I want to show you a miracle. I said, lift up my mat and pick up that, pick it up. There's money in an envelope. Would you give it to me? He picked up. 6,500 rand, he says, Mr. Governor, this envelope hasn't been touched. Wow. It was the first house I was to purchase, and it was there. But let me tell you something. That bomb blast caused so much of pain in my mind mm -hmm. and agony that took place at that time. But the grace of God just came wow. upon me sure. and touched me. And God saved me. Before the bomb blast, I went to trauma after trauma. And the devil was wanting to take my life away. The church I was pastoring, I was taking the instruments and going and having outreaches in different areas because the, the leaders were not willing to go and speak the gospel. And I've been hearing God said, go and speak to people about Jesus and tell them about me. And I was going, from street corners to street corners on a Sunday, wow. having one child and a wife, it was difficult, but I went Sundays to do that. Mm -hmm. But the enemy literally told me, I'm gonna take you out. I heard his voice. He says, I'm not finished with you. I'm gonna kill you. Sure. I said, devil, you need to hear me. I serve a living God. Mm -hmm. I would live and I will not die. Would you say that it's the anointing of God? Because when I listen to your testimony, I can honestly tell you all I keep just feeling in my spirit is it's the anointing of God that has kept you going. It's the anointing of God 
that raised you back to life, right? Absolutely. Tell us how the Lord raised you back to life. Because I'm so excited to hear that testimony. 2017 September, I went for a heart surgery. 2017 June, I flew back from Brazil from all the crusades I've done and the biggest march in the world. It was the Jesus March, Jesus right? Jesus March. Yes. I attended basically every year and I, I, I basically meet the president of the organization. Wow. But that pointing year, there's was something unique. He said to, while I was there with busy preparation, prep, uh, making preparations for all the equipments to be there and I was just watching and normally the president would ask me and interview me and appreciate me coming to the country. Uh, his name is uh, Stephen Fernandes, Apostle mm. Stephen Fernandes. Uh, we seen everything. And I remember I was there with all the delegates from around the world. But I was the only person the family asked me to come. They said, my dad wants you to come and have lunch with the family in a private lounge. I said, okay, let's go. And we went in as the president of Brazil will be taken into the restaurant. And I was uh, driven there with convoy, convoy of cards and sitting with the president. And as we drove in there and we sat down, the president said to me, I want to share a story with you. That last year, I had a heart attack. And they said, I'm going to die. They said to me that you cannot go anywhere. But he asked them one day, can I go to my Christmas service? Mm. He said, they said, okay, you can go, but we're going to have the ambulance waiting. If anything happens, you're going to be rushed back to the hospital. So his daughter sat next to me and his wife sat. They said, you can sit anywhere you want to. And I didn't understand why he's going to share this. And he shared this testimony. He said, his daughter said, my dad walked up to the stadium to go and preach. And the father said, if I could say my last words over there, dead or alive, I want to speak to the people. And she said, as my dad walked, we began to cry because it's the last time we're going to see him. And he, as he walked to go to the stadium, the glory of God came upon him. We ah. asked the ambulance to leave. He asked them to leave. We don't need you anymore. And he was instantly healed. Praise God. As I flew into the country on 2017, June, I had a triple, I had three heart attacks at one time. And I landed into one of the hospitals that I work with as a spiritual care leader. And as I go into the hospital, they begin to see to me and go through exams, examinations. And after about two weeks, they said to me, Mr. Governor, the cardiologist, we're very sorry that we didn't attend to you. Your case is very serious. You need to go for angiogram, but we're doing an emergency. I said, God, I want the best cardio, I mean, the, the angiogram specialist to work on me. As he worked on me, they said to me, four of your main arteries are blocked. You'll have to go for emergency. I was rushed to, the, to an hospital that is quite a big hospital in the country. And as they drove me in, there were people sick in hospital. They went through art problems and they're crying. Elderly man says, listen, don't go for it. You're going to die. I said, listen, you want a miracle? I came here to pray for you. Sure. They said they want me to, two of the guys said they want them back in surgery to get operated. I said, no, I'm going to pray for you. You're not going to go back and say, as I prayed for them, three days later, they went home. Wow. As I got there, two days, three days later, I was I was then told to go for my surgery. And as I went for my surgery, over, over there to go for surgery, and my family was standing, I said, lifted up my hands as I was pushed in. I said, I'm going to go in and come back better. They asked me to sign the document that if you die, nothing's going to, not our responsibility. I said, don't send me anything. Let me just sign. But I'm asking you as a surgeon, do you agree with me? I will go in and come back better. He said, yes. I went into the theater for 20 hours. My family thought I'm not coming back home. I didn't know 
anything that happened. But let me tell you something. I went in there, and as I went in over there, I went into hell. Wow. I went into heaven. I seen people crying. Fathers and mothers that's sitting in church as you listen to me, as you cover up your sin, I seen what was inside you. Mm. I seen children doing things that the moms and dad doesn't know. I seen pastors coming against each other, mm. but they were lying in hell. They're saying, help, help. And they said, help me. Please come and help me. I seen relationships that was covered up in the church. I seen leadership that was covered up as if they're having the best marriage, but I could see they're in torment. They're crying out for help, help me. God said, it's too late. I seen people burning and they're wanting help. Nobody could help them. And the people that you saw were Christians. They were born, so-called born again Christians. Yes. They say they love Jesus. They are leadership. They are preaching on a Sunday morning. They are doing great work for God. But behind them, mm. it's all the sin that's taking place. Mm. And God said, no, you cannot come in. And I said, Lord, what I'm gonna do here? You need to go and tell the people. They need to be pure. Yes. The heart has to be pure before me. Because if you're coming with sin, mm. you're not acceptable. Because the word does tell us that the pure of heart will see God. That's right. It doesn't say the Christian will see God. It says the pure of heart will see God. Absolutely. Because there's so many Christians out there, but they have no fruit. Nothing. So many Christians out there, but they're walking in unforgiveness mm. and hatred and all that kind of thing, but they are not walking in love and forgiveness towards each other. And I can honestly tell you, I know that I've been through so many things in my life that have been absolutely tormenting, rape, abortion, abuse. But the Lord has said to me that if I don't let go and forgive, He cannot forgive me. And that forgiveness is so important because without it, we don't make it to heaven because if we don't forgive, God says He can't forgive us. Absolutely. What we sow is what we reap. If we want forgiveness, we have to sow so forgiveness. And it is possible to heal from trauma. It is. Yes. The greatest thing I've seen there was unforgiveness. And the greatest thing that I see as I sit before you is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. People are dying and going into a lost eternity because of unforgiveness. Whatever yes. you are, you are hearing me. There's unforgiveness. You cannot sleep. People are tormented mm. day and night. They're having dreams. I've seen this. Mm. And I said, Lord, what must I do? He said, go tell my people to forgive. Oh. Unforgiveness, you're not going to go. Hatred, anger, jealousy, pride, bitterness. bitterness. Oh. It's eating people up. Mm. And I'm pleading to everyone today that is hearing me, ask God to forgive you. You're living in a marriage with unforgiveness. You're living with children with unforgiveness. You haven't forgiven the perpetrator who raped you. Mm. Forgive them. And God will see you through. Amen. And I've seen this happen. Amen. I came out of the theater better than I ever went in. I give God all the glory for what He did. Amen. I give Him all the glory. That is so powerful. We've just run out of time. So if I can ask you, do you have an encouraging word for our viewers? Yes. The word that I live with is God has not given me a spirit of fear. But listen to this. But love, power, and a sound mind. I want to encourage you. If you would take this word, love, power, and a sound mind, you can fight any battle mm. and you will be a winner. Amen. God bless you. I love you.
And that's when we'll receive our overcomer's crown of glory, glory. right? When we overcome. Yeah, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Amen. Amen. So um, I'm not going to ask you to close in prayer today because we've run out of time. But I want to say thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us. And we have a small gift for you. Just oh, to remind thank you, you so much. So that you beautiful. can make a difference with your testimony. And we are looking so forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank so you so viewers, much. So viewers, if you have not subscribed to our channel, press that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and please share this testimony. We are making such a difference today by sharing these testimonies to all our friends, our families, our loved ones, and on social media. If you'd like to get in touch with Pastor Barland, his details are on the screen. You're welcome to contact him. And if you even want to think of an organization that you can sow into, that during this pandemic has fed people to the value of over 500,000 rand, consider this ministry. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shalom.